Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. It's good to be back in the house of the Lord, to behold the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple. It's just a great day uh, to be alive, and I'm glad that I'm able to uh, start this day off by being in the house of the Lord. Listen, no other place would I rather be uh, but to be in the house of of our Lord God. Listen, for those of you that are coming in on Facebook and on YouTube, good morning. God bless you. Uh, come on in. Don't forget to like and to share, uh, to let your friends, your family, your, your associates, all that is connected to your network, uh, let them know that we are here and we are ready uh, to praise and to worship our Lord. Amen. Amen. Come on, those of you that are here in person, come on, everyone, stand to your feet. Stand to your feet, grab your Bibles. Uh, stand to your feet and grab your Bibles. Uh, we're going to Psalm 113. Psalm 113. Psalm 113. Psalm 113, the word of the Lord, it says, praise the Lord. Praise, O servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the Lord's name is to be praised. The Lord is high above all nations, his glory above the heavens. Who is like our God? who dwells on high, who humbles himself to behold the things that are in the heavens and in the earth. He raises the poor out of the dust and lifts the needy out of the, uh, out of the ash heap, that he may sit him with princes, with princes of his people. He grants the barren woman a home like a joyful mother of children. Praise the Lord. Listen, go to back to verse 3. It says, from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the Lord's name is worthy to be praised. All right, y'all talk back to me. I'll say it again. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the Lord's name is worthy to be praised. One more time for the Holy Ghost. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the Lord's name is worthy to be praised. And if you are in agreement that our God's name is worthy to be praised, go ahead and do me a favor, put those Bibles down and put those hands together and give our God a great praise in this place. Come on, praise, oh servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. The Lord's name is worthy to be praised. Oh God, as we come before you, we thank you for this opportunity yet once and again that you have given us as your sons and your daughters to come before you, Lord, in this sacred temple to worship your name in spirit and in truth. Oh God, as we begin this worship experience, we ask first of all that you forgive us of our sins. Wash us and make us clean, make us fit for this worship experience so that we can worship you in spirit and in truth. Lord, receive our worship. Receive the song that we shall sing. Oh God, as a sweet smelling Savior into your nostrils. Oh God, be with the man of God that shall proclaim the word of God that stands behind the sacred desk that he may do it with articulation of speech and sound mind and conviction that may cause someone to run and say, Lord, what must I do to be saved? So now, Lord, we tell you, thank you. Thank you for making a way out of no way just this one week, oh Lord God. We thank you and we appreciate you for keeping us when we could even keep ourselves, oh God. If we had 10,000 tongues, we wouldn't be able to thank you enough. But Lord, we have come and gathered, whether in person or in the virtual sanctuary, just to appreciate everything that you have done for us. So we seal this prayer with the clapping of our hands and with the opening up of our mouths. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Everyone said amen. And thank God. 
God. It is still a wonderful, uh, a wonderful day to be in the house of the Lord. And we serve a great God. Anybody know that we serve a great God? Y'all talk back to me. I said, anybody know that we serve a great God? Uh, we serve a great God and he's uh, worthy to be praised. And I just want us to uh, lift this song of the church. And y'all sing, we're going to, I'm, I'm just, we're going to sing along together. And then we're going to go right into the word. Simple song that says, how great is our God. Sing with me, how great. Is our God, all oh, will see how great, how great is our God. Come on, y'all, help me sing. How great, how great is our God. Sing with me, how great is our God. All oh, will see. How great is our God. Come on, everybody, lift your voice all over the room. Tell them, say, how great, how great is our God. Sing with me, how great is our God. All will see how great. It's our God. It's our God. Tibia, oh, how great. It's our God. Sing with me. It's our God. All will see how great. It's our God. Come on, one more time. We got to go to the word. Here we go. Oh, how great is our God. Sing with me. It's our God. Oh, we will see how great. How great is our God. I feel a little old school. Simply says, then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. Come on, y'all, help me say, How great, how great Thou art! How great, how great Thou art! Then sings. My soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great, how great Thou art. How great, how great Thou art. One more time, then we go, then sing. Then sing. My soul, a savior, a savior, God, to thee. How great, how great thou art! How great, how great thou art! Then sings, then sings. My soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great, how great Thou art. How great, how great Thou art. Now come on, if you know He's great, come on, give Him a great praise. Come on, if you know he's great, give him a great praise. While you're yet standing, grab your Bibles. Grab your Bibles. We're going to Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. 
Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4, beginning at verse 11. I'll be coming from the new King James Version of the Bible, but whichever version you have, we count it as blessed. Ephesians chapter 4, uh, the word of the Lord, it says, And he gave himself, and he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry for the edifying of the body of Christ till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to a perfect man to the measure and stature of the fullness of Christ that we should no longer be uh, be children tossed to and fro and carried away with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men in the cunning craftness of deceitful plotting but speaking the truth in love that may grow up in all things into him who is the head Christ for whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies according to the effective working by which every part does its share causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love and the word of the lord is blessed you may have your seats uh, in the lord's church you may have your seats in the lord's church uh, i had to put a tag on this hour uh uh, we are the church uh, series. It would be uh, today's uh, tag would be the church and its under shepherds. The church and its under shepherds. The church and its under shepherds. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, uh, words often change uh, in meaning over the years. Uh, take, for example, uh, the noun ministry and the verb minister. Right? In, in, in the New Testament and within the early church, uh, these were precious and meaningful words applicable to all believers. In our generation, however, uh, they have become professional words, right? A, a minister is generally conceived of as a, a person who fills a role from the body of the believers in the church. Ministers are usually trained for their place of leadership. Also, the verb from to minister it is usually thought of as an activity of the minister or other staff members of the church to whom we also refer to as ministers. In no way was this the meaning uh, and use of the word in the New Testament and in the early church. Thus, uh, our, our text this morning is tailored for us to examine what Paul is saying what in this passage. Look, 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 I hope you haven't uh, closed your Bibles on what you accuse me of making anything up. When you look at the 11th and 12th verse uh, of Ephesians chapter 4, the Bible clearly says, And he himself gave some to be apostles and some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the edifying, what, of the body of Christ. 
Uh, so when we look at that, the first thing that we can extrapolate out is that the Holy Ghost is the one that gave the assignment. Not, 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 not the people. It was the Holy Ghost that gave what? The assignments. And he said, uh, if you look at it in the King James Version, you have it on your phone or your tablet, whatever uh, you'll see, it says, and he himself. And both of them, uh, the he and himself are capitalized, meaning it ain't talking about you and I. It's talking about God in the form of the Holy Ghost. He gave these particular uh, offices. And, and Paul began by naming the primary office bearers of the church. But it was, well, here it is. It was the Holy Ghost that gave uh, the assignment. I, I remember kind of vividly uh, when I thought I was called to the ministry to preach, I, I, I walked uh, into my dad's room. I said, Dad, I think I'm called to preach. He said, yeah, holler back at me in six months. <laughs> <Y'all>, <laughs> yeah. You know, er, 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 everybody want to holler and get a collar these days, and everybody want all these offices, but it was something about the old tradition of y'all. Y'all ain't going to talk. Y'all knew the old passage. You go all the way back to Greggs and Dawkins and, and, and Russell and, them and, and Naylor. You just couldn't become a preacher or an office. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. Or a deacon in the Lord's church or just hold office in church just overnight because you felt like telling somebody what to do. Y'all, 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 my, y'all, y'all don't like the old church, but I liked it because the uh, the preacher they 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 had a sense and they and they they wanted to make sure that that the Holy Ghost called you. Y'all, y'all, y'all forgot old church. Uh, you remember when 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 uh, they called it the morning bench, and, and and the mothers would be over there, and they, and the mothers would be able to have something that that something on the inside that would they be able to let you know when you received the Holy Ghost. They said, "No, no, baby, you ain't got it. Go on, stay. And look. Y'all ain't gonna." Y'all, 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 y'all don't know nothing about the no old church. And they said, "Just keep on calling his name." And, and just, just, just stay there a little while. Why? Because they want to make sure that the Holy Ghost was the one that gave you what? The assignment. And, and, and we have to understand because it gave out a, quite a few of those titles. And for the context of our conversation, we'll leave out uh, the, uh, the, the apostle and the prophet. We're going to leave those alone uh, when we're dealing with the local church. And, and, and let us look at the ones that are left. The two that are left is the evangelist and pastor teacher. The, the, these officers function on the basis of the scripture passage that follows what as under shepherds. Why? Because Jesus is the chief shepherd. He is the great I am. He, and we're just here as what under shepherds of the flock. And here it is. Let's let, let's let this be understood that these uh, evangelists and or pastor teachers, those individuals that occupy uh, those particular offices are not imperial overlords y'all ain't gonna talk to me nor are they dictators they they we don't control the pulse of 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 the church in that way we just go and we adhere and we say what the lord has told us to say and here it is the holy ghost in you is supposed to be able to agree with the holy ghost in me so that you know that the pastor teacher is on what on in a line in what God is saying and what we are saying is supposed to align with the word of God, which then makes it easy for you to follow. Right. There, 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 there's a, a, a trying of the spirit by the spirit. That's why you have to what, search the scriptures to see that is what the man and woman of God is saying is true. You just don't take our word just as our word, because I could be telling you that the sky is gray and you walk outside and it's blue all day. Right? There, there has to be, there has to be uh, some type of uh, 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 agreement within the spirits and understand that those of us that occupy that office, we're not overlords and imperials and we're not dictators. We, we just, we say what the word of God says and because you are in agreement with the word of God, you don't necessarily follow what we say, you follow what God said. 
I'll say that again because everybody say, I ain't doing that because the pastor said. But no, if the preacher or the pastor is directly coming from the word of God and you say that the Lord Jesus Christ is the head of your life, you're not following the man or woman of God. You are following God himself. What are these under shepherds? To do let, 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 let's break it down let's break it down the, the the major task is to be aimed at here we read we just read it in the text is to be aimed at the perfecting what of the saints for the work of the ministry i hope y'all haven't got confused that once you come to jesus the work then begins the work don't stop there, there, there is work to be done. We, we've sung the song and you've heard it in the church. I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. If you not, if you haven't not recognized, there's a war going on. You know, say so what did y'all know the scripture? Because we wrestle what not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against wickedness in high places. Y'all, y'all, y'all do know that we in a fight. The work of the ministry for the edifying of the body of Christ, the work to, uh, that, that is translated perfecting is, is, is very rich in its meaning. It means to fit the saints. Right. It's almost like uh, uh, those of us that have been privy enough. Let me just go back. I think I can hit everybody right here. Most men, when we go to get a suit, you want to make sure uh, that it fits correctly. When we buy a suit, uh, the bottom of the suit is not already done. It got a whole bunch of ridges. Just in case, ladies, you didn't know it has a lot of ridges at the bottom. And the man has to go get the suit tapered at the bottom. He has to go get it tailored. I take y'all all back to a joyous occasion. Ladies, remember when you went to the prom y'all remember prom that you know we just got out of prom season and they had to fit your suit they had to fit your dress to you you know what i'm saying they had to make sure that you was looking as as, as cute as you wanted to be they had to tailor of uh, the man's pants or you had your seamstress that, that, that would fit the clothing to you. That's almost the translated word as it means uh, for perfecting. It means to what? To fit the saints. It means to complete the equipment or dress of uh, the saints. Here, here, here we could refer to the list of the pieces that, that, that Paul enumerated uh, in Ephesians uh, chapter 6. Y'all remember e e Ephesians chapter 6, don't you? Run, run with me real, real quick uh, to Ephesians uh, chapter 6. And, and, and Paul says uh, that, 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 that we have to do some things. When you get to round about Ephesians chapter 6 verse uh uh, uh, verse 14 he says stand uh, what 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 therefore having girded your waist with truth having uh, uh let me go to the king james version because y'all act like y'all don't know bible unless it come from king james version you know uh, uh stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth having on what the breastplate of righteousness this is all the things that are supposed to be uh getting fit to you uh, uh and your feet shod with the preparation of the god Gospel of peace above all taking the shield of faith wherewith you shall be able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation. Some of y'all out there just fighting and ain't got nothing on your head. <laughs> but you out there giving folks pieces of your mind. Y'all y'all ain't going to talk to me. You, you, you're supposed to have a helmet of, of salvation on. That, uh, that would almost be like the football player going out to the football field, got all his pads and hip pads and all these things on. They going out there to play and don't have no helmet. The, the, the most important piece is what's covering your dome. It's, you, you, you need your, your, your helmet of salvation and your sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Some, there, some of y'all out there fighting ain't got sword to fur. You just, you just, 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 just quoting scripture and just scripture just wrong. <laughs> Y'all ain't gonna talk. Just use the Bible all out of context. Just, just what they say in you know, the cemetery. I mean, seminary. Just cowboying all over the scripture. You got to, you have to take the sword of the spirit, which is what the word of God. There, there, there's some armor 
you supposed to be putting on. You 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 put off hatred and you put on y'all ain't you putting on and you putting off. You you taking off jealousy and you putting on your shield of faith. You you taking off envy. Come on now, y'all. You gotta put on and put off. There, there, there's things, there's, there's equipment in order for you to be able to properly function. Why are you going to go to battle and don't have on the right armor? You have to be able to go to battle uh, and have the right armor on. The word perfecting also means to repair. There, 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 is, uh, uh, there it is used what, in a disciplinary sense. Some, some children of God ha, ha, had become so careless in their spiritual lives and their equipment or their spiritual dress has what become ineffective. Remember, we, we, we've been talking about, about over the last month. It, it, it's because in, and maybe perhaps they become undisciplined. You don't understand how important your lifestyle is to your walk with God. Because you what you'll mess around and kill your own testimony because as soon as you want to invite somebody to church, they gonna look at you like you lost your mind. Y'all, y'all ain't gonna want y'all, y'all, y'all don't wanna be honest. I, I was at uh, I had the, uh, the 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 great pleasure of going to uh, a birthday dinner of one of my oldest friends. Literally, she's been my friend for 35 years. 35, 35 years, and, and they got to a point in the celebration, they said, I said, all right, now y'all know I got to go. They, everybody said, yeah, you got to go to work in the morning. Like, they, they, because they, they were leaving the park. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. So y'all, they, they, they were leaving the party, and he's going to the other party. They, they was on their way to the after party. They was like, all right, Pastor Wiss. <laughs> Them Negro, they, they left me right there, Deke Shaw. They was like, all right, Pastor, we see you on the other side. We know you got to go to work. We going to pray for you here. Why? They already knew the test. Y'all ain't told y'all. Y'all see my story. They knew the testimony already that was attached to my life. They knew. They were like, well, you know, Pastor, you know, you, we, we got to say, well, let's just kiss and say goodbye at this point because we, you know, not only do we not, we don't even want to act a fool y'all, 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 we don't even want to act a fool around you. I, I was at, I was at a other, I was at a, a celebration earlier at the park and they had some Moscato and Henny and all kinds, of, and they said, they, they, listen, it's just the respect, like when you walk in and people honor who you are, they said, Pastor, is it okay if we drink? Y'all, y'all don't see, see, look at y'all. Y'all, y'all ain't from the old school. They, they used to mess around when the pastor came around. Folk used to get to hide in cigarettes. Y'all, y'all ain't to hide your drink. Wait a minute, that's the pet. Why? Because there was a reverence that went up, well, that went with those that were walking. What in the way? Do people have to straighten up when they come in the room, or do they look at you and be like, ah, oh, yeah, whatever? That means there might be some repairing of, of your testimony that you need to do because there should be some sense of reverence. Why? Because God is in you. And people should know that. You know what? I might not want to do that around them. Or I want to make sure that what, what I'm doing is comfortable. Not, it doesn't mean that they're not being lawful. Paul says all things are lawful, but all things ain't expedient. What does that mean? You may not be able to do everything around everybody because what it will be, it will over a course of time diminish your stance with them when it's time and the Lord opens up a window for you to minister. You don't have no ground to stand on. Why? Because they don't see you how they're supposed to see you. So, yeah, you could take a sip of the fruit of the vine, but how much, what is it going to cost you? It don't mean that that Merlot ain't good. It don't mean that that cab ain't going to taste good with that steak, but should I drink it around them? Right? We, we know the Modelo is going to be good. That, 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 that Coors, that Cerveza, y'all ain't talking to me. Y'all act like y'all don't say, oh, Snoop D.O. Double G. <laughs> <laughs> y'all act like y'all don't watch TV. Just call me Snoop. Okay, Snoop. 
D O double G. <laughs> right? They did the, the Corona commercial. Y'all, 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 y'all. Listen, it's it's it, the because the Bible says it's good for us to be able to eat and enjoy and be merry and enjoy the fruits of our labor, but we still have a responsibility, even within that, we have to be mindful of who we're around. Why? Because we got work of the ministry, what? To do. You have to be around like-minded people that aren't going to kill your testimony just because you want to get a sip of McAllen. It, it, because why? It's okay. Some folk, you know, you just got to be able to take it too far. The Bible didn't say you couldn't drink. It said don't get drunk. Because why, y'all, all, all they had was water and wine back then. Y'all act like they had Kool-Aid. <laughs> they didn't have no great Kool-Aid, red Kool-Aid, you know. They, they didn't have no Sunny Delight back then. It wasn't no, wasn't no lemonade. It was either you was drinking water or you was drinking wine. And they was drinking wine with everything. Everything, everything. But... They had a sense of who they could do th what things around. Even, even Jesus had to steal away some time by himself away from the disciples and just what? Be God. Right? We, we have to be able to understand their values and their priorities. Some of these new age Christians is all mixed up. You, you can't do what everybody do. It's, it, it, and, and, and the funny thing is, everybody always want to put the whole responsibility on the pastor. Like, I got to wear the responsibilities of all of y'all. Y'all can act the fool and be cool, but then I got to represent the entirety of the church. Now, how was that fair? We all, we all Christians, but all the responsibility that, that is on the pastor. Right, and then if he do something wrong, see, I knew he wasn't nothing. Wait a minute, how how much of your nothingness? Y'all don't want to talk. Y'all, you know what I mean. We have to understand that everybody has a responsibility. You you have to be able to realize now that each and every one of you are under shepherds in your own way. You have people that what are following you. They're looking at what you do. How you behave, how you talk. You can't have church stew and pastor chicken and then want somebody to come to Christ. I can't, I just see y'all, y'all should have just said ouch because nobody said amen. We have to be careful. Why? Because all of us that serve as under shepherds in our own way were, were, were to help those people, what? Repair their priorities. And what, 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 listen, what was all this for? I'll say it again. For the work of what? The ministry. Interestingly enough, the Greek word uh, for the word in which we derive uh, the word deacon is deaconos. Which means what? It means ministry. It was, it was not a word reserved for the professional staff members of the church, but a word describing the function of every member of the body of Christ. Each and every one of us are to be about God's ministry. Right? Y'all, y'all, y'all forgot. Yeah, here, here it is. Here, here, here's where it lines up with the word of God. It's, it's, it's right there in Matthew 20 uh, and 26. It was Jesus that said, and he goes on to say it in 26 verse, but who, whosoever will be great among you, let him be your minister. Right? You hear what? To serve. If only we could destroy uh, this concept that ministry is a word reserved for the professionals. Right? Ministry is for all of us. It's for all of God's children. All of us are to be about the ministry of Jesus Christ. 
When, when, and here, that's this, this, this how you know, when each of us function uh, as a spiritual minister, the body of Christ will what, then be edified. Right. You have to recondition your mind on what the ministry minister is. That don't mean you're going to get up uh, behind the sacred desk and start pontificating the word of God uh, to the people of God. No, that means you go about your life in a mode of service that is to help people and to uplift people and to carry them and to show them a way uh, that is different than the normal way. When other folks is talking about them, you praying for them. work of the evangelist, the pastor, teacher, the deacon, and the under shepherds of the flock is always, here it is, it's always to build up and never to tear down. According to scripture, God has called his under shepherds, here it is, to the business of construction. All of us are under construction. There is something that needs to be tweaked and tooled at in each and every one of our lives. Some, somewhere in your life, something that probably needs to be demoed. Something else needs to be renovated. Uh, some, somewhere else, say maybe some, you need to put some touch-up paint. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. Somebody, somewhere else in you, you need to get that sanded away. You know what I mean? And then but put some putty. Some, y'all, it, it, all of us are under construction. And, and, and what we have to understand, I was looking uh, at a service earlier this morning when I got up, and it says, well, what we have to do, uh, we have to be able, we have to stop as Christians, stop using uh, the fishing rod to get people, the fishing rod that has a hook on it, and we need to use a net. Right. What, 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 what you mean, Pastor? What's the difference with a fishing rod and a hook? You're going after uh, you're using a particular bait and you're going after a particular type of fish. Right. Y'all, y'all, y'all ain't talking to me. You know, now, 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 church, you want a particular type of person to come to church. You want a particular person to be a member of your church. But we have to understand when you use a net. When you use a net, you catch whatever comes, y'all don't tell me, you, whatever comes in the net is what's being caught. There is no particular anything, no matter if you get squaw fish, if you get red snapper, if you get catfish, you get boss, you get, uh, 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 y'all ain't gonna talk to me, whatever it is. You get some shrimp, you get some lot, whatever, stuff, folk that's getting on your nerves and biting on you and clawing on, it does not matter why, because you're fishing with a net. And then once they come, you allow the Holy Ghost to do its work. Y'all remember when, when, when you came to Christ, you didn't have it all together. Now, why all of a sudden you want everybody to come to Christ now got to be together? The, the big, one of the biggest omens is when people say, you know what? I can't come to church, you know, because I ain't got it all together. Listen, you ain't going to never have it together. I, I got to get right. You ain't going to never get right. For as long as you live, you're going to need some get right. So when you're going out, you have to use the net concept. Jesus told them, men, I will, I will make you fishers of men. They went out there and they used nets to what? To be able to grab as much as possible. So sick, I, I, I got to go because it's getting close uh, to 11 o'clock. And, you know, y'all get antsy when we get close to 11 o'clock. First, the Holy Ghost gives uh, the assignment. And secondly, and I only got two points for y'all. I'm closing for the second to the last time. Uh, the second point is Paul outlined the aim. He outlined the aim. He, here's the aim. It's right there in the 13th verse of Ephesians chapter 4. It says what? Till we all come in the unity of the faith. That, that's the aim. We are to what? To create unity. That is the aim. We are to create unity. It, it, it would be a one, it would be, it would be just, just wonderful if every member of the body of Christ made him or herself to be a creator of unity uh, within the fellowship and never a source of discord. There, there, there should never be a time where somebody can call you on the telephone, I mean the telephone. 
and be able to tell you something that is negative and then you believe it without even going to and not doing no research. You, you, you have to be a source of what? Fellowship. Never a source of discord. That's one of the things uh, that the Lord hate. What is those that go around sowing what seeds of discord among the brethren? There is no greater blessing to a church fellowship than the presence of those men and women who love unity and harmony and who actively seek to create it amongst the believers. What they 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 know they here here here's one here's the one of the biggest things they know what to say how to say it they know what to do and when to do it. One of one one of the things it, it, it was a young lady uh, and she you know she she's divorced and she's trying to get back in this dating thing. I said, man, listen, I'm gonna pray for you like you pray for me because it's hard out here. Oh y'all and y'all don't want to speak truth to power because this 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 just this that's a whole nother sermon. Listen, the church and its under shepherds, I'd take a detour to this just these women folk. Lord Jesus, y'all pray for nothing. <laughs> but 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 the, she 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 was talking and she was like, Pastor, I need you to help me. I said, Here, I'm gonna give you two things. Oh, look at all these married women. Do y'all got your notes and y'all ready for all this information? I didn't know I was gonna do a, a whole dating seminar. Let me come down here. No. <laughs> She said, man, how, how can you help me? How, how can I understand how, how to do this? I said, all right, these are the two things that you need to understand, and they're going to bless your life. I promise you, if you do these two things, a man will give you anything you want. And I told her what? Learn how to say it and when to say it. That, that, that's all I got. And you can get anything you want. Learn how to say it. It's not, you can say whatever you want to say. Y'all, y'all see, I can't get no help in Zion now. You can say whatever it is you want to say. But it's how you say it. And the most important thing is when you say it. Because you can say it great, but you said it at the wrong time. I can't get no help in here. See, I'm, I'm helping y'all. Y'all, y'all relationships about to go to a whole nother level. You gonna come back? Now, nah, just go and give me a love offering when it start turning around. He gonna be like, "What didn't got into you?" I went to a meeting one night. <laughs> but you gotta know how to say what you wanna say. Listen, sisters, don't get that crook in your neck. I'm gonna say what I'm gonna say. You know, y'all got this thing about I'm gonna have the last word. See, that's why you're in the place you're in now, because you want to say, you want to have the last word. But know how to say it and when to say it. You know what I mean? Uh, one thing I marveled at my grandmother and great grandmother about y'all talking about, they never, they never emasculated the man. Y'all ain't gonna and, and, and grandpa papa, he'd sit over there in the corner and do what he want to do, but they made y'all see some old, some younger women, they think this stuff is ancient, it's gonna put you back in slot. But they made sure that Papa had his meal first. It, it was an order in the house. He didn't have to say much, but we knew who was in charge. It was order. It was uh uh. Just sit that over there. Don't mess with that. That that that's your grandfather's. That's Paul Paul's meal. And didn't nobody? No, don't sit in that seat. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. You know, it, 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 we knew how to do stuff. Why? Because what there was there was an order to this thing. It's the same thing in, in, in Christianity. When we're looking for the harmony, there's an order to this thing. We have to know how to treat each other. We have to know how to talk to each other. Why? Because Paul says, we're, until we all come into the unity of the faith. And if you know how and what to say, then, then conversely, they know not when to speak. Y'all ain't going to talk. There's a time when you have to do what they call shut up. 
It's just, it's not expedient for me to talk right now. Why? Because maybe what you have to say is not going to be edifying to the hearer. You have to know when not to speak and know when not to act. That comes when you're yielding yourself over to the Holy Ghost. Comes as every member of the body of Christ, what is being controlled by the Holy Ghost. You're not controlled by your own emotions. What the Bible is true, what? Because a soft answer turn away, what? Wrath. You can catch more bees with honey than you can with vinegar. That, 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 tell me how that attitude working out for you. Y'all ain't gonna, y'all ain't gonna, it's okay. <laughs> what, what, what else? And that we henceforth, what? Be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every, what? Wind of doctrine. Now the church has always had within it, we have to understand those who have uh, remained babies in the faith. You got up and down because they're not doing those who have refused just to grow spiritually. They are like children and they are most often dominated by their desire for that which is novel or spectacular. You know, the folk that just won't love the word of God and come to the church uh, for the word of God. They want all the pomp and circumstance of church. You know, they want to hear uh, 30, 40 minutes of singing and two minutes of the why. They, they, they are ever at the mercy, you know, of, of the latest fad or, or, or gimmick that some churches uh, are, are using. They are always under the influence of that last person with whom they had a conversation uh, or the last preacher uh, they heard. Paul says, Dude, here you, you got to start growing up. Everything just can't tickle your fancy. Listen, man, you know what? That just, it sounds too sweet to be true. It has to be some type of, uh, uh, some, 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 some type of, uh, of growth attached to your Christendom. Stop. He said, stop being infants and weak and at the mercy of everything or everybody that comes along. You have to be what? Rooted and grounded in the word of God. A part of the task of every true minister of the body of Christ is to help spiritual babies start to grow. But if you a baby, how you going to help somebody else? Yeah, and uh, yeah, well, listen, how do you help folk grow? By speaking the truth in love. Every word in that sentence is vital and quivering what with life. Speaking, Commun what? communicating by word and example and conduct. Your conduct speaks, your, your example speaks, your word speaks, everything about you, it speaks. You know, have you seen uh, some women when they walk in the room, they just all, you're like, man, she's just so regal. Her whole aura, what? It just speaks. Men come through, they'll be like, man, there, there's just an aura about him. Well, here it is. This is how we define it. They have what? It. The, the, what? The truth. What is the truth? The gospel, the word of God, which shall never return unto the Lord void, but will accomplish what? What its purpose is. In love, that's, that, that's the secret motivation. Even the word of God can, uh, uh, can be spoken without the constraint of love. And when that happens, if we, don't, if we don't lace the word of God with love, it will repel rather than soften and inspire. Because we have seen even within history that people have used the word of God as a weapon. Use it as a weapon to try to uh, get people to do what it is that they want them to do. Well, 
Okay. But 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 the 16th verse, I'm closing because we got we got to go home. The 16th verse, it says, uh, "For whom the whole body joined and knit together by what uh, every joint supplies, according to the effective working by which every part does its share, causes a growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love." What, what, what that mean, Pastor? That means you have to know what part of the body you are. You can't want to be the hands and the foot at the same time. You might be the ear. It's okay. That means you just not the nose. You know, you might be the kneecap. And you don't, you don't, you don't think it's 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 very important and showy because you know it's not out there. It's not the eyes. It's not something a person can see. But you know what? Here, do me a favor. Mess around. Lose your kneecap here. You know, do do me a favor. Just go and take your kneecap out and see how effective you're gonna be. You know, everybody always wants to be the showy things in the Bible. How about you just go and cut off your pinky toe? See how effectively you're going to be able to walk around without a pinky toe. You know what I mean? Because everybody always wants to do the showy stuff. How about lo lose your ankle? How about, how about you just do away with your shoulder blade? Right? We, we, we all have to play what? We all have to play our part. You don't think it's important? Well, just go on. Don't, you know, don't lose your liver then. And see how important it, it, it is to you. We have to understand that each and every one of us has an important part in the body of Christ. And all of the joints uh, are, are joined and knit together. The whole body functions and it works Together, when your body is functioning and working in its optimal uh, 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 effectiveness, man, you can do some wonderful things. But if you don't pay attention to your body, you know your, your cousin Arthur will start creeping up on you. And it'll be followed by his friend called Ritus. When you know when we, we when you don't exercise and you don't use uh, your body correctly, you'll start having certain type of back pains and and leg pains and aches and stuff. You know it causes you to rise out of the bed a little bit slower. When you don't properly stretch, you get up. Oh! Well, you get you get a spasm. Right? Why? Because th this is the mission of the people of God. This is both the aim and the assignment of every member of the family of God. When, 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 when we lead the people to become dependent, here it is. We have to lead people to become dependent on God. Not on, you ain't, you ain't dependent on the pastor. You're not depending on the deacons. You're not depending on the trustees. You have to become dependent on God. That's where we have to lead people to become dependent on God. The, the, the members of the body, sometimes fragmented, sometimes spiritually infirmed, out of fellowship. But when we, when we can get them to start depending on God over the course of time, things will what, start to fit together. What firmly adhering to one another, complementing what one another. And how does that happen? With the love of God, like the ligaments of the body, it, the love of God what, will start to bind us together, supplying us with the power that each of us, that we, what, that we need to have. When this happens, we will then be able to be built up in the, what, the spirit of love. The Lord will be glorified because what? It's the radiation of love of the body and sinners will be converted and his name will be glorified. Why? Because everything is being done with love as the, as the center point. Not I'm going to love you after. No, I'm loving you before. 
Here it is. For God so loved the world. That he gave for God commended his love toward us that while we were yet sinners, what Christ died. Y'all, y'all didn't hear what I said. I'll say it again. God commended his love toward us, and that while we were yet what sinners, Christ died. I say it one more time. God commended his love toward us. That while we were yet sinners. Christ died. He commended love toward us. That while we were enemies of him, he decided to die for us. That's what it's all about. It's the love that we are to show one to another, which will get us to where we need to be. Come on, give God a big hand clap of praise. And there may, there, there, there may be somebody here or somebody in virtual sanctuary that, uh, that says, you know what, I need to be able to start to experience that love uh, that God has commended toward not just me but everybody uh, that will and if you know that you are out of the right fellowship uh, with God and you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your personal savior listen this is uh, the time for you because listen you you cannot uh, bank on you cannot count on that you are going to be able to get another chance uh, to be able to get it right. And if you know that you don't have a personal relationship uh, with Jesus Christ, this is your time to make your outward confession. The Bible says if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Christ has raised him from the dead, the Bible says what? Thou shalt be saved. You just have to tell the Lord that, Lord, I'm a sinner. You need to be, I need to be saved. Come into my life what, and save me a sinner. It's, it's as simple as that. As simple as it was for us to fall into sin. It's as simple as for us to fall back into right relationship with God. He did not make it hard for us uh, to get, get it back right with him. We just have to confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that Christ was raised from the dead and we shall what be Save. So come on, let's put our hands together and give God a big hand clap of praise for those that are uh, making the decision uh, for Christ. Even now, come on, keep on clapping your hands because it's offering time. It's offering time. It's this time that all of us uh, can 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 play. Uh, a wonderful part in uh, for those of you that are here and, and you're giving and you need uh, an envelope, you can probably look in your pew uh, and you have one uh, that right at or right at your disposal in your pew. And for those of you uh, that are giving in the virtual sanctuary, you see even now you have the, the capability to give uh, via Zelle, PayPal, Givelify. Uh, uh, I, I don't know what the other ones and you can even give uh, 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 via mail and I'm appreciative and I'm thankful uh, for those of you that have been consistent uh, in your giving uh, to this local body we would not be here if it had not been for your gifts uh, that you give uh, weekly bi-weekly monthly and so I, uh, I deeply uh, appreciate you for affording uh, your resources and obeying. Here it is, obeying the word of God and bringing your tithe uh, into the storehouse that they may be uh, meet in God's house. Listen, I did, maybe in Bible study, I deal with uh, what we heard uh, Dr. Creflo Dollar talk about a few weeks ago. If y'all haven't heard it, he just went on some tangent talking about tithes is not biblical. Oh, Lord. That's why we got to watch it. Uh, my thing is, hey, if tithes is not biblical, give all that money back that you got. <laughs> all right, I'm I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna leave it there. We're about, keep keep on coming to Bible study. We 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 gonna talk about it, uh, and we're gonna deal with it because now, well, listen, we don't want, as we said, we don't want folks to be tossed away with every wind of of doctrine going to and fro. 
it's amazing that when you get to a certain economic status, now all of a sudden, what got you there? Now, now it don't mean much no more. Uh, so it, it's, it's a wonderful thing, but we're going to pray uh, for the man of God uh, to hopefully he comes into a right awareness uh, of what the word of God uh, is trying to say. Come on, let's, let's, let's go before the Lord and pray for our gifts. God, we thank you for the gifts uh, and the givers that continue to extend unto them the open windows of heaven uh, and continue to pour out a blessing uh, that they will not have room enough to receive. And Lord, we thank you for uh, 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 canceling the assignment of the devourer uh, that we won't have holes and, and moths in, in, in our pockets, but you have keep on providing for us uh, and making a way for us, not only just financially, but physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, Lord God, you, you're just keep on making a way. So we're appreciative of how you have returned to us uh, 20, 30, 50, even 100 fold. And we will continue uh, to give not just of our treasure, but our time and our talent uh, uh, that, we, that we may be meet for the master's use. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Everybody say amen. amen. And thank God. Come on, let us stand. We getting ready to go home. Amen. We making good time. We're making good time. It's been a good day. Uh, it's been a good day. Uh, let us not forget, we, we took a, a little vacation for, uh, for you all to have the opportunity to blow up some stuff. <laughs> blow up some stuff last week or watch some stuff being blown up, but we're back at it uh, on Tuesday. We're back at it uh, for for Bible study. I'm looking to see each and every one uh, of your faces. It's very informative. You're missing some good stuff uh, if you're not here uh, at Bible study because it's helping us build our foundation. What are we building? We're building on what we believe. Uh, if you don't know what you believe, it's, it's hard to believe in something that, what, that you don't know. Uh, so come out and join us uh, at uh, 1 p.m. every Tuesday, 1 p.m., uh, come out, be our guest as we dive uh, into the word of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. Come on, let's look unto the Lord. The Lord bless and keep you. The Lord uh, make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance uh, upon you and give you peace. Now unto him that is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before his presence uh, with exceeding joy to the only wise God. Be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forevermore. Let everyone say amen. amen and thank God and thank God. Listen, as you leave, you can come and drop your offering uh, in the receptacle. Go in peace and have a wonderful remainder of your morning. And we'll see you uh, on Tuesday at 1 p.m.